Hello friends, in continuation to the Proton NMR lecture, today we are going to discuss third point which is multiplicity of the signals also called spin-spin coupling. In this lecture we will cover the following points, different types of signals based on multiplicity, different types of coupling, the way of finding multiplicity of a signal, Pascal triangle and coupling constant. In proton and MR, a signal can be a single peak or it can be consisted of a bunch of peaks depending upon the number of equivalent intractable protons. The proton and MR signal can be a singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet, quintet, sextet, septet, etc. We will discuss in the later part of this lecture under which condition which type of signal results and what is the intensity ratio of the peaks in a signal. There are few more types of signals like doublet of doublets, doublet of triplets, triplet of doublets, triplet of triplets, etc that we will discuss in a separate lecture. Different types of coupling. In proton and MR, spin-spin coupling occurs between two non-equivalent protons. The spin-spin coupling is through bond. Based on the number of bonds between the two coupled protons, there are three types of spin-spin coupling. Geminal coupling, in which the two coupled protons are on the same carbon that is they are separated by two bonds. Vicinal coupling in which the two interacting protons are on the adjacent carbon that is they are separated by three bonds. Third is the long range coupling in which the two interacting protons are separated by more than three bonds. This four bond coupling in which one of the four bonds is double bond is very common while the coupling between two hydrogens separated by four sigma bonds are not very common and generally not observed. These are observed in some rigid systems. The spin-spin splitting of NMR signals gives us exact information about the number of neighboring protons which is very useful in the structural analysis. Relation between multiplicity of a signal and number of nuclei causing multiplicity. The multiplicity of a signal is equal to 2ni plus 1 where n is the number of neighboring nuclei causing multiplicity and i is the nuclear spin quantum number of the nuclei causing multiplicity. For the proton, I is equal to half. So, the signal multiplicity arising from the proton-proton coupling is equal to 2 into n into half plus 1 is equal to n plus 1. For example, ethyl chloride. If we have to find the multiplicity of signal arising from the methyl group, we will first look at the number of protons on the neighboring carbon. There are two protons on the neighboring carbon. So the multiplicity of the methyl signal will be 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. That means it will appear as a triplet. Similarly, for CH2 signal, there are three protons on the neighboring carbon. So the multiplicity of the signal will be 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. That means it will appear as a quartet. Let's take the example of ethyl acetate. 
the acetyl CH3 is attached to the carbonyl carbon having no hydrogen so the multiplicity of the signal will be 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 means it will appear as a siglet CH2 group is attached to the CH3 that has three protons so the multiplicity of the CH2 signal will be 3 plus 1 is equal to 4 means it will appear as a quartet CH3 is attached to CH2 so its multiplicity will be 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 that is it will appear as a triplet the multiplicity of a proton and MR signal and relative intensities of different peaks in the signal due to first order coupling with a group of equivalent nuclei can easily be recalled using Pascal or Pascal type triangle. For the coupling with the nuclei having I is equal to half like 1H, 13C, 19F and 31P, Pascal triangle is used. But for the nuclei with I greater than half, we cannot use Pascal triangle. For these nuclei, we use Pascal type triangle. In this lecture, we will discuss only Pascal triangle. For Pascal type triangle, I have uploaded a separate lecture. The link for the same is given in the description of this video. We know that the multiplicity of a proton and MR signal arising from the coupling with the nuclei having I is equal to half like proton is equal to n plus 1. So if n is equal to 0, m will be equal to 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. That is, it will appear as a singlet. For n is equal to 1, m will be equal to 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. For n is equal to 2, m is equal to 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Similarly, for n is equal to 3, m is equal to 4. And for n is equal to 4, m is equal to 5 and so on. Now, let's make Pascal triangle. If the nucleus is non-coupled, that is n is equal to 0, the signal will look as a singlet. So there will not be any question about the intensity ratio. If n is equal to 1, from the previous calculation, there will be two peaks in the signal. So this signal will split into two peaks with the intensity ratio of 1 is to 1. If n is equal to 2, the number of peaks in the signal will be 3. Each peak in the signal with n is equal to 1 will split into two peaks like this. Now, let's find the relative intensity. The middle peak is the combination of 1 plus 1. So, the relative intensity will be 2. The relative intensity of the peak on the left is 1 and that on the right is also 1. So, the relative intensity of the peaks in the triplet will be 1 is to 2 is to 1. If n is equal to 3, each peak in n is equal to 2 will split into two peaks like this. Second peak from the left is the combination of 1 and 2. So the relative intensity will be 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. The left peak has the relative intensity 1. Similarly, we can write the relative intensity of the peak on the right like the way we have written for the left. Since the left and right parts 
are the mirror images of each other. So the relative intensity for the right part will be will also be 3 and 1. So the intensity ratio for n is equal to 3 will be 1 is to 3 is to 1. If n is equal to 4, the number of peaks will be 5. To find the relative intensity, split each line for the signal with n is equal to 3 into two parts like, like this. The relative intensity for the middle peak will be 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. For the first peak from the left, from the middle on the left will be 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. For the last peak from the middle on the left will be 1. The relative intensity for the right side peaks will be 4 and 1. So the intensity ratio for the signal with n is equal to 4 will be 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. Similarly, we can find relative intensities for different peaks of any multiplicity. Coupling constant or J value. Separation between two adjacent peaks of a signal is called coupling constant. It is denoted by J and it is expressed in Hertz. So in a doublet, a triplet and a quartet, these are the J values. Now we will discuss numerical values of different coupling constants. First, geminal coupling constant in saturated system. It is represented by 2J because it results from the coupling of two protons that are separated by two bonds. It ranges from 10 to 18 Hertz. The magnitude of geminal coupling constant decreases with the increasing electronegativity of the group X. It also decreases with the increasing ring strain. Vicinal coupling constant in saturated system. This is represented by 3J because it results from the coupling of two protons that are separated by three bonds. It ranges from 6 to 8 Hertz. Just like geminal coupling constant, the magnitude of vicinal coupling constant decreases with the increasing electronegativity of the group X. It is highly dependent on dihedral angle phi between the two vicinal CH bonds. We can easily visualize the dihedral angle if we draw the Newman projection. This is the Newman projection and this is the dihedral angle phi between the two vicinal CH bonds. The relation between the vicinal coupling constant and dihedral angle is given by car plus equations which are 3j is equal to 8.5 cos square phi minus 0 0.28 when phi is between 0 to 90 and 3j is equal to 9.5 cos square phi minus 0 0.28 when phi is between 90 to 180 degrees. Since cos 0 is equal to 1, cos 180 is equal to minus 1 and cos 90 degree is equal to 0. So from these two equations, we can say that the vicinal coupling constant is maximum when the dihedral angle is 180 degrees. After that, when the dihedral angle is 0 degree and it is minimum when the dihedral angle is 90 degrees. Long range coupling in allylic system. It is denoted by 4J 
because it results from the coupling between two protons that are separated by four bonds. It ranges from 0 to 2 hertz. Magnitude of coupling constants in alkenes. In case of alkenes, there are three commonly observed coupling constants. One geminal denoted by 2j and two vicinals denoted by 3j cis and 3j trans. 2j varies from 0 to 3 hertz. 3j cis varies from 7 to 10 hertz and 3j trans varies from 12 to 18 hertz. Thus from the values of vicinal coupling constants, one can determine the geometrical isomer of the alkene. In aromatic systems, there are also three types of coupling constants, ortho, meta and para. Ortho coupling constant varies from 7 to 10 hertz, meta from 2 to 3 hertz and para from 0 to 1 hertz. That's all in this video. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon if you like this video. Thank you very much.